Okay then gang, so we've got to the point now where we're taking a user's password and their email, we're hashing the password and then we're storing that in the database when they try to sign up. But as of yet, we're making all of the requests through Postman and we still don't have a front end for that sign up or the login. So in this video, what I'd like to do is just create those pages so that we can start to test this out from the website itself instead of from Postman all of the time. So to do that, we're going to go into our sign up view first of all, and we want to get rid of this H1 and replace that with a form. So we can get rid of the action because all of the submission of the form is going to be handled in the JavaScript. So in this form, we need two different fields. We need a field for the email and a field for the password, but also for those two different fields, I'd like a label to say what the field is for, and also some kind of container to hold the error for that field if there is one. For example, if a user types in a password that's not long enough, tries to submit it, an error will come back and we're going to populate that little container for the password field with that error. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to do an H2 that says sign up, and then below that, I'm going to do a label and that is going to be for the email field and inside we'll say email and then below that we need an input field now you could have this as type email if you wish and then we're going to get some html5 front end validation but i'm going to keep this as text just so we can demonstrate the different validation that we've got going on in the server and then in the future if you wanted to change this to email you can do now i'm going to give this a name also called email and I'm doing this so that we can easily access this field value from the JavaScript later on and we'll see how that works later. And also this is going to be required. All right, so we need now that container to output any kind of error for this field if there is one. So I'm going to create a div with a class of error for that. And also I'm going to give this a class of email as well to say this is the email error. And that way, when we're outputting the errors later on, we can identify where to output the email error. And also in a second, we'll see one for the password. All right, so let's just copy all of this and paste it down here. And the label this time is gonna be for password. And then this is gonna say password as well. And then this time the type is going to be password. And that means when we type into it, we're going to get those little black dots instead of the letters so that it remains a secret from anyone watching you do this. And then the name of this is going to be password as well. And this is required. And then we want to change this class to password error. All right. So we just need a button at the bottom now to say sign up. And this could be an input submit button if you preferred, but it doesn't really matter because whenever we click on a button inside a form, it automatically fires a submit event. Okay, so that is basically the form and I've already added the styles for these. That was done in one of the first videos. They're all inside here. So we can see these styles right here. So it's gonna look a bit better than the default styles when we see this on the screen. So if we now go to forward slash sign up, we should see this and we do. Okay, cool. And like I said, if we start to type in here, we see those little black dots instead of the characters because this is of type password and that protects it. Okay, so now we need to do a script for when this is submitted so we can grab the values from these different fields and then send them to the server. So let's start that process now. I'm going to do a script tag and then inside that, first of all, I'm going to grab a handle of this form. So const and then we'll call this form is equal to documents dot query selector. And we want the form element. OK, so now we have that form. We can attach a submit event listener to it. So I'm going to say form and then I'm going to say dot add event listener. And I've just noticed this should say const. OK add event listener and we want to listen for the submit event. When that happens, we're going to fire a callback function and take in the event object. Now we can use this to prevent the default action when the form is submitted. And remember that default action is the page refreshing. We don't want that to happen. So this prevents that from happening. And then down here we want to get the values. So we want to get the values from this and this. So I'm going to store each one of these in a constant. So const email 
is equal to and then I'll grab the form and then because we gave this a name attribute right here and this a name attribute we can just use dot notation and pass in whatever the name of this field is right here to grab that field so I can say dot email if I call this you know blah then I'd say dot blah down here to grab that field but it doesn't grab the value inside it just grabs the input field itself to get the value we need to say dot value and that's all we need to do okay so we have that value now i want to do the same thing for the password so const password is equal to form and then dot password because that's the name value right here and then we want the value property from that okay and finally all i'm going to do is log these to the console so console.log email and password all right, so let's give this a whirl. I'm going to go over here and open up the dev tools and go to the console, zoom in a little bit. And then if I type in some kind of email, mario at google.com and then a password test one, two, sign up. And we still get that refresh. And that's because I've not actually refreshed the page to begin with and grabbed these changes where we prevent the default action. So let's try that again. Mario at google.com and then test one two sign up and now it doesn't refresh and we get these values right here mario at google.com and test one two so we're successfully grabbing those details and later on what we're going to do is make a request and send those details to the server like we have done in postman so that we can sign that new user up all right so we need to do something very similar for the login page. Now, I'm not going to write all of this out from scratch. All I'm going to do is copy and paste this in because I'm super lazy. Okay, so we just need to make a few changes. So instead of sign up, we want login. And then this needs to be a login at the bottom. And this is fine. This is fine. All of these are going to be the same because we're still entering in an email and a password. And then down here, I think all of this is the same as well. Yes, it is. And the only thing that's going to change down here later is where we send the request to. With this one, we're going to send a post request to forward slash sign up. With this one, it's going to be forward slash login. But for now, let's leave it as that and see if this works. So let's go to forward slash login. And now if I type the email, I'm going to say yoshi at google.com and test one two. If I log in, we should see those over here, and we do. Okay, so now we've got those done, we can start to hook up the form with the back end to create new users. But first of all, I want to talk about how the authentication process is going to work using JSON Web Tokens and Cookies. So I'm going to start in the next lesson by talking about how cookies work.